And then you've got sales and customers. Now the sales is an income line item, in essence, revenue. So you would think this would be giving you more information about revenue. Customers could have something to do with accounts receivable, but we're more focused on the income statement line item now. So we've got the customer contact list. Doesn't tie out directly to a financial statement report, but it's just giving us a list of our customers. And then you've got uh, the deposit detail. Now the deposit detail, if I open that up, kind of ties out to the bank account, but it's kind of here because you would think that most of your deposits would be by the, by the customers. Now this report, you can kind of create this report because it's, uh, it's, given, it's basically giving you detail if I go to the first tab and I go into my checking account. And if I was trying to look at my like increases to the checking account, I can try to, I can try to customize this report and then filter it by transaction type and possibly pick up say the deposits and I might have other things that increase it such as transfers or whatnot but that's another way that we can kind of run reports related to the checking account which is often something that we might end up needing to do because there's a lot of activity and different transactions going through it. I'm going to close that out and we've got then the the estimates and progress invoicing uh, by customer. So this would more likely be used in a job cost type of system, which would be using the estimate forms and a progress invoicing system would be oftentimes in like a percentage of completion type of business, which is more of a specialty area. You got estimates by customers. So that's going to be basically not impacting the financial statements, but tracking those estimates that you're that are going to be like the initial touching point to possibly be picking up a job and then you've got income by customer summary so if i open that up this gives us more detail on the profit and loss income line items so income total comes out to 10,002. and so this one if i change the date from 0101 to 02 12 31 2, 2, and close the hamburger and run it so now you've got your income by customer information nine six eight three four one and you've got here 10 so sometimes it's not going to tie out because it doesn't tie out as nicely oftentimes as accounts receivable because sometimes you can post something to the income account and not assign a customer to it so but if you if you use the same process of assigning a customer every time it should tie out quite nicely and that's one reason that we don't basically make income accounts by customer i don't say this is my uh this is this is my tom jones revenue account even though tom pays most of our revenue or something like that because you want to just have the income account for what it is you do and be able to use these other reports if you're in a full service accounting system to give them more detail about about breaking out your income by customer so that's a useful uh tool to note but again it, it differs depending on the kind of uh, system you have we'll talk more about it later inventory valuation uh detail so this is your inventory report it's giving you s more information on the balance sheet account of inventory so there's the overall inventory account this gives you more information about it and then you've got the inventory valuation summary once again should tie out to the balance sheet account of inventory payment method lists so this gives you uh, a list of your payment methods which you know is the populated on a form physical inventory worksheet so this helps you to kind of track your inventory if you have inventory and do a physical count possibly with it so it ties into the inventory once again product and service list so we talked about setting up our products and services so uh, this would be just simply a list of those products and services, the things that you would populate the sales forms with, invoice sales receipts. You got the sales by customer detail. So this is similar to the, the uh, other one we had over here, but this is sales by customer. We'll talk about the distinction between these two later income by customer and sales by customer, because one of these I think is taking on the income and expense side of things by customer. So if you're assigning some expenses to customer, I think the sales by customer detail is just taking on the revenue side of things is the distinguishing factor. We'll talk more about it later, but if I go into this one, 
and I go from 010122 to 123122 and run it. Now you've got, I think this is just your revenue by customer. And the total down here is at the 102805. Does that tie out to our income statement? We've got the uh, 10, it's a lot closer, yeah. So this is our income side. The other report is trying to take the income and expenses, if you applied expenses, uh, to a particular customer, I believe is the difference between the two. And then you got sales by customer summary, similar report, giving us detail on the sales line item, sales by customer type detail. So now if you have types of, of customers, grouping the customers and types, then you have that. Sales by product service detail. So this is the other way we typically break out. Let's just do the summary. That'll give the detail. Let's look at the summary. Th this is the other way we break out our income line because we don't typically want to put every item that we sell, every piece of inventory, every service that we do. We typically want to group them together. And then uh, we would like to have another report breaking out our sales by item, by the things, goods, and services that we sold. Again, this would only work if you ha are using a full accounting system using items and using sales receipts and I'm sorry, using invoices and sales receipts. Yeah. So from 010122 to 123122 and then we'll run it. And so that comes out down here to 10280, which is pretty close to our number here. It's not going to be exact if you don't use items, right? If you don't do the, the, the full service accounting system to report your income, if you're just using bank feeds, for example, to record uh, your deposits coming through. A deposit form doesn't have items and doesn't use the same kind of customer detail to run these sub-ledger reports. So you might change your system a bit. But if you're recording income with invoices and sales receipts, these are great sub-reports to give you more detail on your income line item so that you don't record income accounts by customer or too many by item, right? Because you have these sub-reports to do that. So then, we got the time activities by customer details. So now I've got the time by customer, transaction list by customer. So this gives us your transactions by customer. And uh, and that, that well, anyways, we got the transaction list by tags. So once again, we have those tags uh, that uh, if you have the tags turned on, which is a specialty kind of thing, we might spend some time on that later. I'm kind of interested to dive into that. But in any case, 